you are able for the ringing of the bell and our gathering hymn. Welcome to worship on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost. I am Pastor Cheryl. As always, I'm glad to be here, and I'm so glad that each of you is here. A special thanks to Lois Smith, our guest pianist this morning, and as always, thanks to our very faithful choir. On this Labor Day weekend, we begin with a prayer. Lord, on this Labor Day weekend, we give you thanks for work and for the many tasks you call us to. On this day of rest, strengthen us for the week ahead. Be present with those who work by day and those who work by night, those who work near and those whose work carries them far away. We pray for those who have no job, those who work but are not paid and so not recognized. We pray for those forced into early retirement and those denied work because of their age. We pray for those who must work at jobs they hate, and we pray all this knowing that your labors on our behalf never cease. Knowing that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Amen. Are there any announcements this morning that anyone has? Lots going on this week before Rally Sunday, which is next Sunday, September 12th, um, Tuesday at 7 or Tuesday, September 7th at 6.30, there's a teacher's meeting. We're still in need of one teacher to help two Sundays a month with the first through third graders. If anybody's feeling called to do that, feel free to come to the meeting and or let me know. Men's Fellowship at 11 a.m. this Thursday. Um, welcome to Sunday School for the three-year-olds and their parents. Any child who to Sunday School this Saturday at 11. Rally Sunday, bring an old t-shirt. Can be any kind of shirt. Old, new, stained, plain, slogan, all things made new. 
You'll see what will happen with your t-shirt. Bring a piece of paper from home that you can cut into small pieces. Or maybe you've seen a picture, an old piece of wallpaper. doesn't matter. Again, all things made new. If you are free and have an hour or two or three to help any day this week, let me know. We can pick up sticks outside, take down bulletin boards inside, put up bulletin boards inside, clean out some Sunday school rooms and supply carts. Um, plenty of opportunities for everyone. And finally, um, on Sunday, or on Saturday, it will be the 20th year um, anniversary of not the 9-11 attack on our country. And so we are going to join the Minnesota Department of Veteran Affairs in ringing bells on Saturday, 9-11. Um, the Liberty Bell will be ringing and a bell on the steps of the state capitol that day. And bells at, with churches all over the country, at least all over this state. Um, if you look at the back of your, or look at your announcement page, you'll see the times. And if you are available to be here Saturday morning, they're going to ring, ring the bell from 746 to 747, honoring Flight 11, 803 to 804, honoring Flight 175, 837 to 838, honoring Flight 77, and 903 to 904, honoring Flight 93. So you could come and ring the bell. You could come and just be here and pause for those few minutes of recognition of what forever changed the face of the world and the face of our country. Our prayers are with families for whom this will be a particularly difficult Saturday. Um, any other announcements? <coughs> and there's a clipboard out in the narthex. If you're able to help in the next, oh, it might be coming around. I think Jenny has it. If you're able to help with anything in the coming Sundays, please feel free to sign up. And worship will continue with confession and absolution. Please stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. our gospel affirmation is printed on page two in our bulletins. Please stand as you are able. the seventh chapter. From there, Jesus set out and went to, away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenish, of Syrophoenician origin. She begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then Jesus said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of Decapolis. They brought to Jesus a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Jesus took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears and spat and touched his tongue. 
Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Epheth, Epheth, that is, be opened. And he immediately, his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Archie, do you want to come up for a children's message? We'll keep it short and sweet, just like you. Brianna has a story for you today. It says, God loves me. God loves me from my head to my toes. God loves my eyes. Where's your eyes? God loves my nose. God loves my hands. God loves my knees. God loves my laugh. <laughs> God loves my sneeze. Achoo! What was that? God loves me. God loves me from my head to my toes. God loves my eyes. That's right. <laughs> That's right. God loves my nose. God loves my hands. God loves my knees. God loves my laugh. Ha, ha, ha. God loves my sneeze. Achoo. God loves me. God loves you, Archie. Have a good day. Thanks for coming up. You want to take that with you? Okay. Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we have said, this is a holiday weekend. Tomorrow is Labor Day. Have you sent or received any Happy Labor Day cards? Yeah, me neither. This holiday isn't celebrated in the ways that many are. No cards, no gifts, no decorations, few if any parades, maybe a picnic. It marks the end of summer, at least unofficially. It reminds us that school is or will be starting, mostly in person this year. Thank you, Lord. We know all holidays are more than just a day off from work or school, but it is good to be reminded of what they mean every now and then. So I did a little looking and a little reading, and with Labor Day, well, as Derek McQueen in the Labor Day sermon through the Cairo Center notes, it's not often that we hear about the Pullman strike of 1894 that initiated this federal holiday. Some of the younger among us may not even know a pu that Pullman was a term used for a sleeping car on a train. And the Pullman strike involved the Pullman porters, the workers who took care of the needs of the passengers. There isn't likely to be a six o'clock newscast this weekend or a Facebook video showing a politician laying a wreath at a monument for the 34 strikers killed or the 57 strikers that were injured in that strike. Which 24 new hour news channel or whose tweet is going to remind us of the property damage done, which when inflated for today's cost could be well over $8 million. And where is the government watchdog group that will remind us that President Grover Cleveland sent over 12,000 army troops and U.S. Marshals to break up that strike and allowed an attack on American civilians. But it was this explosive chain of events that caused the Senate to take notice of Representative Lawrence McGann's call to adopt the Senate bill to honor labor on the first Monday of every September. And it was this set of events that led President Cleveland to sign the bill into law just two days later. And quoting Reverend Beth Dickerson, it was the sacrifice of these workers and others for basic dignities of wage, hour, and living conditions that we are called to honor on Labor Day. Labor Day is different things to different people, says David Rigg in a WordPress sermon series. To the factory or office worker, it may be a day off. For the policemen who deal with extra traffic and alcohol abuse, it's a tough day. 
to farmers and ranchers. It's just another work day with cattle to feed and work to be done in the fields. It's knowing time is drawing short, fall is upon us, the harvest has begun and must soon be finished. For parents and homemakers, for caregivers, for healthcare workers, mostly it isn't a day off. Their work must be done regardless. Did you know that child care workers and nannies had no real rights as workers until 2010 when people in New York acted? And it still hasn't changed in many places. By the way, that's also true for farm and land workers. So on Labor Day, we consider what it is we fill our days with. But that's tomorrow. This is Sunday. What does Sunday have to do with our work, with our labor? with the rest of our week. Raise your hand if you believe that what you do at home, at work, as volunteers, as citizens matters to God. Raise your hand if you believe what you do is holy and sacred. Every single one of you should have your hands raised. You, very good. You are God's partner in doing God's work in the world. Every Sunday, I ask God to bless our bishops. We often get in teachers, especially Sunday school teachers. We pray for our musicians, at least on occasion. We sometimes pray for health care providers, particularly in the last 18 months. How often do we bless or pray for our accountants, our electricians, or our carpenters, or our plumbers, or our technology experts? How many of us regularly, regularly pray for those who volunteer, not just in church, but in all the social service agencies that our communities depend on? Speaking for myself, I can't remember the last time I said to anyone, thank you for the work you do. I trust that you're doing your best to make this world a better place. And for that, on this day, I celebrate you. Yeah, I really never say that. But do you know, can you just imagine that God is at work in you and through you for the sake of the world that God loves so much? If our life as Christians is shaped by our commitment to the crucified Messiah, the risen Savior, anywhere, anytime, and doing just about anything, then voters and volunteers website managers and temp workers, bus drivers and barbers, students and secretaries, parents and payroll officers, all, when they offer their time and talent and labor to God, are allowing their whole lives to be shaped by their commitment to Christ. Please hear me say that you matter, that what you do at home, at work, at school, while volunteering, while keeping a home, while well, being a good friend and neighbor, smiling at someone next door, matters to God and makes a difference in the world. All of our tasks, our jobs, our work, our phone calls, the notes we write, our work is or ought to be in service to God and to neighbor. Martin Luther named all work done in faith as a calling. He said, the works of monks and priests however holy and arduous they may be, do not differ one whit in the sight of God from the works of the rustic laborer in the field or the woman going about her household tasks. But all works are measured before God by faith alone. Luther used the example of a man washing diapers. And believe me, in Luther's time, men did not do that kind of work. And as an intersect project on Luther notes, Luther would urge us to remove the word just from the description of our jobs and everyday tasks. We are not just volunteers. The stay-at-home mom is not just a stay-at-home mom, but the one divinely called to shepherd and care for the home and family. The stockbroker is not just a stock, just a stockbroker but the one entrusted by God with the long-term financial provision of God's people. The sanitation worker is not just a garbage man or just a janitor, but the one called to care for the beautiful world God created. We read in Colossians 3, verse 17, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, 
giving thanks to God the Father through him. This gives work new meaning and dignity. We can't claim to be Christians if our Christianity is only a one day a week affair. God does care what we do Monday through Friday, whether as an employer or an employee, whether you work for compensation, or you do whatever you can as a labor of love. On this day, this day of this Labor Day weekend, when we rest from our labor, perhaps we can take time to stop for just a little while and see ourselves in the awesome, sacred arc of time. And maybe we can know that we are a part of something grand and holy and sacred. Maybe we can see greatness in each other. And maybe we can remember to say to someone, thank you for the work that you do. I trust that you are doing your best to make the world a better place and that you are doing whatever you do, whatever you can do, to the glory of God. And because of that, on this day, I celebrate you. And I do. I celebrate each of you. Amen. children of God and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship. Bless our bishops, Anne and Elizabeth, enliven your church, guide evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries, all who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. 
Spirit of creative power, move among us this day. May we give thanks for the work you have called us to. Heal the wounds we carry because of jobs we hate but must do, jobs we want but cannot have. Heal all those who labor to survive, renew in each of us our sense of vocation. Help us recognize your presence in even the lowliest tasks we face. Help us in whatever we do to work to the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy. Creating God, you provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, who show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Especially as we celebrate Labor Day, unite us in seeking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you accompany those in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution, especially our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan. Protect those impacted by or fighting hurricanes and wildfires and flooding. We pray for all who are ill with COVID as numbers rise, and we pray for exhausted health care providers. Give rescue and hope, healing and mercy to all in need, especially Grace Henning upon the death of her brother, Stan Roser. We pray for Grace and her family. And we pray for all we name now, aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Larry, Nancy, Trent, Jake, Florence, Becky and her family, David, Eric and his family as he battles cancer, and another friend with cancer who is a true warrior. Lord, in your mercy, receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. We share God's peace with each other in whatever way you are comfortable. Waving, elbow, bump, whatever it might look like. with our offering and since at this time we are receiving offering as you come in or as you leave worship we will sing the offertory that is printed in your bulletin on page three of the fact that they could make noise in church by making sure they sang this with shouts of thanksgiving. And look at them, what? Oh, just praising the Lord. <laughs> what can I say about that, really? We continue with our offering prayer on the bottom of page three. Most merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Before we begin our celebration of the altar, I just want to share a few housekeeping details. You're good, Steve. Stay there. If you didn't receive um, the communion elements when you came in, raise your hand and Debbie will get them for you. We will sing the great thanksgiving and holy, holy. You'll hear the words of institution. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. And while we can't gather around 
the rail yet, we will sing a communion hymn, just the first verse of O Bread of Life from Heaven. And then when I'm saying, people of God, this is the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, that will be the time to take your bread and your wine, and we will receive um, the incredible gift of God's love and forgiveness and grace through the sacrament of Holy Communion. Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And in the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing one verse of hymn number 474. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. On 
Please stand as you are able for the blessing. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Creator and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, This is My Father's World, number 824. serve the Lord.